சிலுவை சுமந்து கொண்டே இசுவை என்னை தேடி இறங்கி வந்தே எனக்காக சிலுவை சுமந்து
Hello to you, my beloved brothers and sisters. Like I said, we are continuing the series of Revelation and chapter 7. We have finally come back to chapter 7, where I said we will be bringing in a special guest. That's none other than our professor from Carnegie University, Dr. Naveen Sundar. He is also a person who is preaching the word of God. So, sir, welcome Thank to Jesus, my Redeemer Ministries. So, let's get on with the word of prayer before we get on with chapter 7. So, please, uh, everyone, join us in this word of prayer. Dear God, loving Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this moment you've given us to speak your presence. As it is written in your word, when two or three are gathered in your name, your presence will be Amen. Amen. Jesus, in this time, when we talk about revelation, Lord Jesus, the time when you go John, Lord Jesus, what are the things that are going to happen, Lord Jesus? Help us to get ready, Lord Jesus. Help us to know what is what are you trying to tell us, Lord Jesus, Amen. through this word, Lord Jesus. What are the things that we are supposed to do? What are the things we are not supposed to do? Who are the things that we're supposed to pay attention to? Where are the things we're supposed to give our full focus, Lord? Thank you, Lord Father, for this time, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray this prayer. Amen. 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 Once again, sir, welcome. Yes, welcome sir. to this. Yeah. So, in chapter 7, sir, we know that revelation means unveiling. So, in this, uh, in the first part, we see God sir, purposefully delaying the judgment. What is the cause of that? What is John trying to imply through that? Up to my age of 20, I didn't accept Jesus Christ as my personal savior. But when I accept Jesus Christ as a savior, after that, I just pray to God. Uh, when I just read the revelation, I don't know much about uh, the revelation understanding. So when I read in Revelation chapter 4, that is the time the Holy Spirit came upon John and he was taken to heaven and he received all the revelation from God himself. When I just look at it, I start praying to God Almighty, Lord, I need the Holy Spirit so that I will get the revelation from this book of Revelation when I pray to God. And God filled me. And then when I pray to God, why you called me? That is the time God shown very clearly that my son, according to 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4, everyone should understand the gospel about Jesus. Everyone should come to the knowledge of God Almighty. Until that time, my coming will not come. So, for that, laborers are very few, but harvest is plenty. So, the world have to reach the gospel. So, everyone should understand about why Jesus Christ came for the first time. Until that knowledge the people receive, he will not come back and he will not give the judgment to the people. So that's why God is putting his burden to all the people, those who accept Jesus Christ as a savior. So then I understood, then I realized why this judgment also sometimes delay. Many times we are thinking that the judgment is very near, near, but God is so patient to receive the gospel about Jesus until everyone reaches this gospel Jesus will be waiting for his coming and to judge this world. Sure, uh, that's that's. I really agree with you with that because yes. you know even even there are many people over uh, in this world who have been slaved to many things like drugs, slavery, sex, prostitution, vice versa, and they have been called by God. You know, from the sinners list to a loving right. call. You know, God is choosing many people, worse to the worst. You know, like people how we see in the world, they choose the best, the well qualified. God doesn't have that. And that's the main thing about chapter 7. 
you know, God, irrespective of ethnicity, irrespective of your color, age, vice versa, God chooses the worst. All you, all you need to give is his heart. He will, he will rebuild that broken heart Amen. and he will choose you as, your, as his servant. So, sir, in the continuation, we see about the 12 tribes of Israel. So Jacob had 12 sons. And these 12 tribes originally came from these 12 sons. So how do we see a combination or a link with the Old Testament in this? Yeah. So God, when God called Abraham in, the, in Genesis chapter 12, God called Abraham and said, My son, I want to make you a great nation. And through his generation, God blessed Isaac. And through his generation, God blessed Jacob. And then from his sons, this tribe, God is talking about. And in this particular verse, well, in Revelation chapter 7, you can clearly see about the 12 tribes. All these tribes talking about the sons of Jacob. Many times we will think about in our heart that, oh, all they are belong to Jews, but we are all Gentiles. Why this count 1,44,000? Like many times the people will have this question. Now my, uh, I clearly understood from John chapter 1 verse 11. When I went to uh, Israel, when I went to the people of Jews, they, even now they are not accepting Jesus Christ as a son of God. So it's a very, very uh, tough. When I, when I look at it, I really felt very sad. Lord, I came to your nation. And you call these people as my people, but these people are not accepted Jesus Christ as a savior. And they are not even watching the place where Jesus was crucified, that is the, uh, the place where Jesus was resurrected. Even in that places, normal Jews will not go. They will go only to the place, tomb of David, the place where Abraham laid his son. So such places only even the people are visiting. Okay, so the, when I look at it, then I understood that even God himself called them as Jews, as my people, but these people are not accepting Jesus Christ. That's why John 1.12 says, whoever in any part of this world who call Jesus as a personal savior and believe his name and call his name and Jesus will give them the authority to become the son and the daughter of the most high God. That really encouraged me. But God is so concerned about his people, Jews also. That's why in Revelation 7, he's telling that 1,44,000 means approximately 12,000 from each tribe. God wants to raise from that tribe. And in that particularly, God didn't talk about the tribe of Don. When I look at it, and I just meditate about it, why Lord? And then I understood, according to Daniel 11.37, only the tribes of Don from that, they have introduced us, uh, uh, idolatry to this world. God hates idols. And through that, that's why God is so concerned. God is uh, very much angry about the tribes of Don and not described in that particular 12 tribes. His name is missing. So many theologists really doing that research about from this, the spirit of Antichrist will come. Likewise, they are telling, but we are not sure about it, but his name is missing. God is have some purpose on it, I believe in my heart. I, it, this actually has a link with the delaying of the judgment. So like you said, we are getting into the times of the judgment day. So yeah. what we, you know, many people think that God's going to come like a sudden blast of cause God is going to come. No, there are going to be a lot and lot and lot of people who say that their price they're actually sent by God and we have to believe in them. It's, a, it's actually the devil, it's actually the wolf, the sheep's costume. So we have to be really careful with them. You know, sir, in this, this particular chapter, what is John trying to imply or what is John trying to talk about about the elders and the angels, the four angels, what was they, their role in this particular right. verse? When I just meditate about this Revelation 7, it talks about first four angels. He stops the storm that is upon the earth, upon the sea, and upon the tree. He stops. This is what uh, it says. When it stops means completely destroying the earth. Without that air, we cannot survive. So, 
that is uh, clear talks about the judgment but on the other hand the angel of god coming and saying that you cannot do it until god wants to put the seal upon the people upon his servants when i look at it how much god is so concerned about his disciples or about his servants so he wants to put seal so even when we see in the old testament okay, during the time of uh, judgment for the jerusalem god put seal upon the righteous this is what the scripture says and even when uh, the apostle paul says in second corinthians 1 21 and 22 and when we read in ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 is talking about the seal of the holy spirit so in the last days according to acts chapter 2 verse 17 and joel chapter 2 verse 28 the scripture says in the last days god wants to pour his spirit upon all flesh so through the spirit god wants to seal his people so until that day comes until the servants of god to be protected by the seal of the holy spirit this judgment will not happen this is what the angel clearly gives the message to that four angels that is four angels means it is like north south east and west completely surrounds the whole earth going to destroy so that is the judgment going to come on one side but on the other hand angel of god saying very clear message to them god wants to put his seal upon his people so upon his servants upon his disciples until that time you cannot destroy this earth and that is the i believe the servants of god will be sealed by the holy spirit and they will be taken during the secret coming and then the judgment happens this is what i strongly believe about it that's why god always insist in me my son wherever you go i want to pour my spirit upon my people so that i can prepare them for the second coming of jesus christ this is about the angels on the other hand we are talking about the elders when we enter into the heaven you can see that's a throne of god almighty and right seated by our lord jesus christ according to mark chapter 16 verse 19 and we can see like old testament prophets and the people who are so close with god on the on one side on the other hand we can see the 12 apostles of jesus christ so god always remember the apostles and the old testament prophets and the old testament people of god so they were so close with god when we read in genesis chapter 5 verse 24 genesis chapter 6 verse 9 exodus chapter 33 verse 11 acts 13 22 all these verses says about david abraham enoch and moses they are all very close with god they are all called as a friend of god such a people god will surely remember them and they god made them as elders and near their throne i strongly believe in in the chapter of amos god told that without getting any uh, ideas or without any decisions from these prophets i will not do anything this is what jesus himself saying and honoring the servants of god one side god wants searching the servants and putting the seal upon them through the holy spirit and wants to add and have put their grace upon them before the judgment on the other hand god is keeping in the people who worked for god and they were close with god when they lived in this world they re- he remembers so god is a god even when we are in this earth he remember us and after our depart from this earth and to be with him eternally that time also he remember us such a loving compassionate god we are serving i i totally agree with you this Amen. sir do you agree with the fact that what we said the steel actually has a strong a really really strong resemblance oh, at the time uh, when the at the time of the exodus when the israelites were being protected oh, when they were told to rub the blood yes. on their door walls yes. and they were being protected by god oh, everything happened every bad thing happened to the cattle of egypt except yes. for the cattle of israel everything yes. happened to the bad of the children of egypt exactly. except for the children of israel oh, 
Amen. So people, we should know what a powerful, compassionate, loving Amen. God is. You know, many people, when they grow big, when many people, when they tend to become famous, they will, they will ask their people who made them, who are you? We never, we never even knew in the first place. But God is not a person like that. God is the same yesterday, today, and today. Amen. The past, every single message is I've been saying, God is the same yesterday, yes. today, and forever. That's the thing what we're going to discuss. The particular verse that I really enjoy is verse, Revelation chapter 7 from verse 9. The, after this I looked, and there were before me was a great number of people that no one could count. They were from every nation, tribe, Amen. people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Amen. Everybody standing in front of God, irrespective of ethnicity, irrespective of age, irrespective Amen. of language, culture, country. Yes. Standing in front of the most almighty God, and praising and worshiping Him. Amen. A part of His millennial plan. So, sir, what can, you, what can we understand? Or what is John trying to imply through this particular verse? Yes. Whenever I meditate this particular verse, God will give me that. I am so proud that I am the a citizen of India because this country has many, many languages when we compared with any other country in this world. I agree with you. So, when we look at this particular thing, there is no difference and everyone will come together as one family. So, when I look at that particular thing, God always will put that unity. Whenever I go to Kerala, Whenever I go to Andhra, whenever I go to any part of this nation, God will remove, God will put this particular verse in my heart. In heaven, there is no difference. Everyone will be washed by the blood of Christ. Everyone's soul will uh, towards the throne of God Almighty. And uh, they always will be soaked in the presence of God Almighty. This is the thing that expects in this world also. So, my son, you are living in this particular nation, having many languages, more than hundreds of languages, at least in this nation. So, when you are doing ministry here, you are really practicing heaven in your nation. When you start doing ministry in your nation, you can do any part of this world. <laughs> this I is, totally agree with you. <laughs> this is what God will always uh, give. This is the training ground. Your country... India is a training ground. That's why in India, I'm raising many servants of God from all parts of this nation. And I'm taking these people to the whole world. Initially, the people from the world, they came to India preaching the gospel. But now, from India, God is taking the places to the different nations. Why means here, in this place, according to this particular verse, as you are inspired by this verse, the same verse I also inspired whenever I I working in a place having multi language uh, people will come and gather I will purposely start loving everyone I always bring everyone together in my room and I will talk with them I will talk about their culture I want to know about them okay purposely I will move with them whenever I move with them I will feel the heavenly joy filling my heart a great satisfaction when I start doing ministry with them that's the God that we love, Amen. you know, whenever we submit our lives and our hearts to God, God always makes, God always develops a plan. Something that way, ten times, not ten times, countless times, infinity times is greater than our plan that we had. Because man proposes, God disposes, because he has something better for us. You know, he came, Jesus Christ came into this world to share something. He made many disciples and he, they started preaching the word of God. And similar to that, my beloved brothers and sisters, we also are disciples, not only us, but each and every single one of you. You have been given a mission by God. You have to finish that mission. That is, gather many souls to His kingdom, start loving people. When God made followers, when Jesus Christ came to this earth, He did not see His disciples as disciples, a teacher and a master, or teacher and a student. No, He saw them as friends, because He revealed every single thing that His Father has taught them. To his, to his disciples. So, sir, in this, when we read the book of Revelation, sir, generally, the first time that you ever read this book, what was your reaction? What was that feeling, the initial feeling that you got? Do you mind sharing that with us? Yes. I like uh, Apostle John very much. 
because he is the one whatever these people this roman people even they may kill me doesn't matter i will follow jesus until the end that is the love he had for jesus christ all his disciples went all these disciple disappear and all the disciple from the far place they are watching what is happening to jesus and jesus was hanging on the cross but only one disciple that is john he went very close to the feet of our lord jesus and he saw the blood coming out from his body and the last blood and his water also coming out from his body so whenever i look at the gospel of john or the revelation or first john second john and third john written by an apostle john it will always talk about god's love and how to practice good love among one another and about the revelation that no man no ordinary person can understand such a revelation that god gave to this apostle john is only one thing it inspires me is he had a such a close relationship with jesus that always make me also to pray to god lord i want to have that revelation i want to have that close relationship with you father lord then i will also get a great revelation and i can also prepare many souls for the second coming before your judgment this is the burden that god will put when i start reading about the book of revelation i mean i mean that's really that's really amazing to hear that because the first time when i read revelation initially as a mortal human being i i, I was thinking oh my god how can this be possible it's really beyond our imagination so do you agree with that it's yes. really beyond our imagination right. you know even when you read the first chapter as i uh, previously made videos of the first chapter second chapter and third chapter i i've always said this is hard to grasp this is so hard to believe for a mortal human being but you know in this we can be clearly say, clearly identify and say the fact like how sir said that john was a special disciple oh, john was a special person jesus he is the favorite disciple he had a special touch was he shown every single thing was happening to him similar to what Sir said we also pray we also should desire that special relationship not to any uh, famous personality not to Britney Spears not to any other famous personality but to the person who created this entire universe to the person who is capable of helping us get over our demons get over our goliaths get over any giant barrier Okay. So thank you so thank you so so much for this time. Yeah, so man. so can we have a can we have a word of prayer? Yeah, sure. Okay. Precious heavenly Father, thank you Lord for this wonderful time. Thank you Lord for this dear brother Lord interviewed. Lord Jesus, you have put a great burden in his heart that every people should understand the book of Revelation before the judgment. Lord, everyone should get saved. everyone should come into the knowledge of jesus lord you have put a great burden to dear brother father lord and lord jesus through this interview lord even lord you have given me the privilege to talk about revelation 7 to dear people father lord whoever watched this program lord let your presence should come upon them father lord whatever we meditated today about the angels how the angels want to protect us before that god wants to seal us with the holy spirit and his name will be written on our forehead before the judgment comes father thank you lord for the wonderful lord jesus revelation in revelation 7 father lord jesus please add that blessing to the people who are watching this program lord we understood your love we understood your plan through this revelation 7 father lord and lord jesus i specially pray for my dear brother also but thank you lord for putting a great burden in him that everyone should come into the knowledge of jesus christ lord jesus bless his ministry also lord jesus in the coming days everyone should come into the knowledge of god and lord jesus he should prepare the people for your coming father lord thank you father let this video should reach the whole nation father hallelujah father you only said you have to take this gospel to the whole world Master Lord Jesus please bless please bless this video father that everyone should get saved that everyone Lord Jesus 
Lord, in that 144,000 people, Lord Jesus, Lord, you put a burden in each and every one of our heart that I also want to be that one person to be get redeemed by the Lord Jesus Christ through his blood and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for adding that blessing. And Lord Jesus, one day we will be in heaven without any differences. We all will be soaked in the presence of God Almighty and we will walk towards the throne of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Without any differences, Master Lord, give that heart even today in our mind, in our soul, in our body. Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, for adding that blessing in our life. Once again, Lord Jesus, we surrender each and every one of us and the people who are watching this program, Lord Jesus, into your mighty hand. You take complete control. Let your name alone be glorified. Lord, until you are coming, Lord Jesus, Lord, we want to be with you always, Lord. We want to be in your word, Lord. We want to fulfill your command, your word in our life, Master, Lord Jesus. Lord, fill us with your word. Fill us with your presence. And Lord Jesus, continually to do your will. We ask all these things in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Thank you, beloved brothers and sisters. Thank you so much Christ for joining Lord. us. In Thank, this you. Thank you, beloved brothers and sisters, once again for joining us in this ministry, in this Bible discussion session. So see you in chapter 9. So remember, we finished chapter 8. So all the series will be available once again in the ministry. And a kind announcement, I will be extending my ministry to YouTube. It's been a long time, so I will be extending this. All the videos that I post will be in YouTube. Feel free to please share those videos to your loved ones. Be blessed. God bless you. God loves you. And so Amen. do I. Once again, shalom to you.